oh yeah this bike just takes me places yeah but like but like the places you'll go you know okay as- dr seuss <laughs> Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on The Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Brian Mitchell so we can talk about his bike, the Jameis Renegade Expat Adventure Bike. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO118. Hello. So, Brian, you've had this thing since 2017? Yep, I bought it. I think in august it was like my first real adult bike i had a bike i've been using for a number of years that i got towards the end of high school and i just met that other bike today you did you you biked it from uh st paul to uptown where i live so that's quite uh quite nice thank you and that's just uh, an orange track bike aluminum frame with some like two inch thick tires Um, i'm gonna be using it this winter uh hopefully as a just winter bike as i try to get into winter biking but um but that's not what we're here to talk about <laughs> no so this is the bike this Jamis renegade expat that i bought was uh to replace that as a better road bike i've been borrowing uh, an older steel frame Jamis bike from my dad for much of 2017 um and so i was like used to a road bike and i'm like this is great i want one of my own so I talked to some coworkers at the time, and I went to the hub over by the U of M. I don't think it's open anymore, but um, they had Jamis bikes there, so I bought one there and ended up with this. And largely for, I don't remember all the exact reasons, but generally uh, it seemed like a good kind of all-around bike. It has a steel frame, so it should be nice and robust, and like I think that absorbs some vibrations a little bit better than aluminum, so I hear. Um, it has a carbon fiber fork on the front, which keeps it a little bit lighter weight. Um, I remember the the guy at the bike shop saying that would pair well with the steel frame. So I'm like, cool. It only came like that. So that's all I could choose from. Um, I'll note that the model I got, I think, was about $1,200 in 2017, which was the next tier up from their uh the cheapest at the time, which was an $800 Renegade. Yeah, so we were looking at the current lineup, and, and our best guess is that this is equivalent to what is called the Renegade S4 here in 2021, right? Yeah, and in 2021, they have the Renegade A1, and then the S4, S3, S2, C2, C1, and the A1 starts at like $1,100, and the C1, which is the fanciest one, is $3,900. So. They've added a bunch more bikes. When I bought mine in 2017, there were three. And I think there was something like 800, 1200, and 1600. Maybe there was a few more, but they were all like $400 apart kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, And I got the middle middle one. Seems like a good spread. Yeah. And so like, it's not the most narrow tires, like a road bike. So I think the the 35 millimeter wide tires, they came with gravel tires. I've replaced them with some more road friendly ones since, since I put enough miles on them. They're just getting worn out. Let's see. What did I? What else is on there? Oh, uh, the back tire is quick release. The front is a uh, what's that called? Tube, tube through through axle through axle. Thank you. Which I've uh, taken off precisely one time. That was this May or June, as I had a flat tire on uh, Portland Avenue. Whoa, wait. That's the only flat tire that you've had, like on the front. Yeah. The entire. Wow. I'm jealous. The only one I've had to replace has. Yeah. Well, it's way easier to take off the front than the back, I think. I don't know. Huh. I, I've never, like, t- yeah, had to mess around with a through axle, so I have n- zero experience with, like, whether it's easier. I mean, it, yeah, it required a little bit of a, it required a wrench, but you can take it out, and it, just it being a front tire, you can kind of pull the axle out, and then you lift the bike up, and then you can wheel the tire away and you set the bike down. It's a lot mm-hmm. easier. You don't have to flip the bike to get it off and things like you do at the front. And oh. I was able to put it back on one-handed, so or just by myself. I did not flip my bike when I had to. I don't think I did. I don't remember. It was a while ago now. But anyway, it's a good bike. It serves me well. I, it's the only real like bike I've ever looked into and bought and things, so it's I'm kind of like a ignorance is bliss it works well for me i've able to put a rack on the back so i can do panniers or a rack top bag i have a couple water bottle holders i have one on my front fork i got one in the the main frame um it has i guess it's a 
Got dropped handlebars, which is the first for a bike that I've owned. Those are quite nice. It's got disc brakes. I don't know. Yeah, I like the seat stock, but it works. Um, I don't know. What else What else do you say about bikes that are... Um, I guess we can we can talk about some of the specific components here. So you mentioned that it's a full steel frame uh, with a carbon fork. Um, we've got some TRP Spire disc brakes. You talked about the tires already. The drivetrain uh, is a 2x10 Shimano Tiagra. Tiagra? How do you think that's pronounced? Tiagra, <laughs> Tiagra, Tiagra. Yeah, so one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's... It sounds like it's a really good, I mean, they, they market it as an adventure bike and then, you know, they name drop like gravel, cyclocross. Uh, they probably talk about bike packing in there somewhere. Like, you know, they... <laughs> what does it mean? Who knows? Yeah. And so many of these, like all, all these different types of like beyond the road kind of usage cases are honestly like close enough to each other. I feel like that you know, the design considerations for them are not far apart. I swear I've seen touring also with this because there's a bunch of mounting points that you can put a bunch of things on. And like, I know the the top bar, what is that called? Top top bar? The top tube? Top tube. Yeah, there we go. Um, it's a, a bit of an angle. Okay, I'm going to look at my bike because it's behind me. So it angles down toward from the front to the back. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... I think that has some sort of a difference when it's a, if it's an adventure bike, like if you're carrying it through the forest or you're running on a course with their bike, like the angle might help or I I don't really know. I mean, it's, yeah, I think pretty much every bike has a top tube that is higher in the front than in the back, but for like touring bikes, they tend to be much closer to being level with the ground than say a mountain bike, you know? A lot of mountain yeah. bikes that you see have just like teeny tiny triangles, especially when you get into the ones that have like full suspension and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, there's like one of the nice things about that is it gives you a lot of room to play with in terms of getting like a frame bag that could carry a lot of stuff. I think, yeah, inside the triangle, you have like two mounting points for water bottle cages, right? And then you probably have one under your down tube. Yep. And I have then two on the front fork as well. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that uh, I think a lot of bikes manufacturers kind of overlook that they'll they'll just like put a single screw hole on the outsides of the fork, uh, you know, kind of to, to allow you to be able to put uh, a front rack on. But um, having two screw holes is great because then you can, you know, you could put a regular water bottle cages in there you can you know you can get something a little bit beefier like uh you know salsa's got the everything cages that you know you can put like some some nice small dry sacks yeah uh in there it's a it's a very small thing that just gives you a lot of other possibilities yeah and i i finally put a second water bottle holder on my bike on the front fork because i have a u-lock clip which is kind of on my back back tube the vertical one and that uh yeah the seat tube seat tube thanks you know you know all the terms i don't i, I know i know like three quarters of the terms <laughs> more than me so that kind of blocks access to the to the seat tube mounting point for a water bottle but i'm thinking about taking that off and just carrying you lock all the time but we'll see right because you're getting the waste basket i i have the waste basket i wore it oh yeah for the first time um on sunday since we talked about the wastebasket real quick, uh, it's a from the Trash Messenger Bags. It's a kind of a it's a fanny pack, basically, that has special stuff for biking. So there's the kind of container thing is largely waterproof-ish. Uh, it's got a spot where you can put a U-lock, clip your keys. And I'm sure that we will do a full review of it in a future episode of Second Opinion. So make sure that you subscribe to the show. Yeah. To get that episode as soon as it comes out. And in the meantime, I'll put a link to it in the show notes so you can uh, take a look at yourself. If I can offer a friendly criticism of <laughs> when you showed up to the to the camp out with, you know, your water bottle cage on the right side of your fork. And I just thought to myself, well, that's really asymmetrical. <laughs> he should have oh. another one on the other side to match. It, it hurts me too, Ian. It hurts me too. <laughs> I, yeah, I, when, when I started doing that, um, I had like mismatching t 
types of water bottle cages. And I was like, no, this will not do. I need to buy another one of the same type, you know, so I can have a symmetrical match- matching yeah. set. So I had a steel water bottle holder, like a like a light gray, shiny, airy, it, it, not shiny, but slightly buff steel water bottle holder which is great because that matched my steel frame it was great i bought it at the hub the day i bought my bike and then here i am buying a second one a week and a half ago and it's like a black aluminum one and i'm like i hate that it's different (laughs) i hate that it's different but i don't know if i'll ever be able to find the same one again without just buying a full set of three or whatever on my own but right so you mentioned that uh before you bought this bike you had been borrowing another bike from Jameis from your dad yeah um so did that factor into your decision on getting another Jameis uh no not really I had no idea what brands to buy at all no idea um I wrote a couple bikes from the hub on Minnehaha and then I wrote a couple at the U of M location and there was like some more like racing bike that I rode that was I think on sale or used like it, I could have bought it. It wasn't that much more expensive than the one I, end, I ultimately ended up getting. And it was like super lightweight. I think it was a, an aluminum frame. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a fast road bike. This is great. But it's like, it was like, you know, approaching racing bike or something. I'm right. like, of course it's fast and nice because of that. But um, I definitely am appreciative of more utility and mounting points and things at this point. So I think I kind of, I don't know, I'm quite happy with what I ended up with. I'm really not so sure what other bikes are out there and what things to look out for because I'm kind of a, I have this bike. I like it because it's the best one I've ever owned and I'm used to it now, but I don't know what I'm missing out on very much. Right. Other than I see, I see you you riding around talking about accessories and things that you can put on your bike. And while I appreciate that and things, I'm never going to have quite as much as you are likely though. I say that now, who knows? (laughs) It's a slippery slope. Yes. And, and I mean, um, like looking at your bike and and thinking about the issues that I have had with my previous bike versus my current bike, uh, you know, regarding compatibility with accessories and things, I can't th- I can't really think of anything that jumps out at me about your bike that would you know that would turn me off in in terms of a utilitarian like you know I want to be this to be compatible with X Y and Z kinds of stuff it seems like it's it's a it's a good basis for building up a you know kind of whatever kind of utility you want to get out of your bike you know whether that's like no i just want a totally stripped down build that's you know as fast and light as possible it you know it's it is steel frame so it's probably not like the the lightest thing out there but uh you know you you you'll be able it seems like you'll be able to put whatever you want onto it yeah definitely and it it sure feels light when i don't have anything on it yeah and i've been riding with panniers for the last couple times i ride so yeah you know i've been able to put accessories i got a phone mount i have a bell that sits around the front handlebar tube um front light i got a seat bag that has the light in the back i have a you know a rack on the back that is not meant for disc brakes it's braced with just like loose washers on a long screw but it does the job (laughs) it's not quite centered but it's good enough let's see i have a leather handle that i use for lifting up and down my stairs i love that thing yeah yeah that was recommended to me by a mutual friend of ours uh like a month or two ago and i loved it yeah shout out to matt lewis yes avocado plex avocado plex um, so I bought that is from like uh Walnut. I'll put it, you know, I'll put it in the show notes, Walnut Studios out of Portland. So I knew you were going to say Portland. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> I, I, I would have bought it from anywhere, but yeah. So they call this the little lifter. I will put it in the show notes. I don't know. I really don't know what else to say about my bike. Like as we were saying before this episode, like a week ago, I was like, it gets me places. What more can I say? And so I'm pretty happy with it. It's a bike. It's I don't know. I feel like I'm relatively new to biking still in the sense that I only know what I currently ride and not have really explored other brands and things. And if you name drop things, I'll be like, yes, I know Specialized makes bikes. I've heard Trek isn't as good as other things these days, but I don't know if that's a political or a like a (laughs) political social thing or a like quality kind of thing. So, right. 
Oh, right. Because people are mad at them for like making bikes for police or whatever. Oh, is that it? I think I think that's the Trek thing right now. Yeah, that sounds right. So it gets me places and I'm happy with it. Uh, I will say I've been having problems with my bike this summer, as Ian is very well aware of. uh, I got new tires in May or June, and I have since had like four slow leak flats in my back tire since. And it's like I bike somewhere and then eight hours later, it's nearly flat or like the next day, it's nearly flat. And I pump it up and I can ride 10 or 15 miles and then it drops, you know, 20 PSI. And then I either keep pumping it up every half hour of riding or I get a new tube. And I've retaped the wheel twice inside over the spoke hole things twice in the last like month. It's a mystery. It's yeah. I mean, it's it's normal, right? You just get a new tube every two or three weeks. You ride your bike, right? <laughs> uh paranoid biking is the norm i did somebody somebody did ask me recently like so how often do you have to change a flat and i'm like you know there are some times where i have to like you know change two flats within three days of each other and then there are other times where i just like go months and months and months and never have to worry about it it's very unpredictable but yeah having like a lot of slow leaks all in a row that's suspicious. That seems... Yeah. The only common denominator at this point is the tire itself. Right. And I mean, it was. I think it was a $25 tire. Like, it's not... I've spent more on tubes than that tire did. Cost me, so <laughs> All right. So, by yeah. Like, yeah. So, I don't know what the deal is. Might be time to reevaluate that purchase. I guess. Maybe. Yeah. I guess, yeah. If that is the thing. I don't know. Anyway... The bike itself is great. Yeah. I like it. I've probably scratched up a bit. I know you commented on that at one point. You're like, whoa, that's pretty scratched. But I think I just like, I don't know, maybe I'm not, I don't treat it like the most gentle thing when I'm locking it up to a bike lock or something. And I always use my U-lock and I lock the frame through the front tire. Mm -hmm. And so that probably scratches the fork in the frame around the yoke a bit. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I assume that like your U-lock is kind of rubber coated. Yeah. it's all the scratches are generally from the bike racks themselves. Ah, uh, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. And yeah. I often will lift my bike over. So I put the wheel over the rack so it sits on the rack. Uh huh. So, uh-huh. That's way better for space. And like a lot of them are kind of designed that way. Yeah. And so. Which is really annoying because not everybody, you know, has the upper body strength to like lift their bike up and over something that, that way. But this is a cyclocross bike. So you better be able to do that. <laughs> I get, you know. It's a steel frame in the back and a carbon fork in the front, so it's it's more back heavy. And if yeah. I have any gear on the back, you can lift the whole front tire up with like your pinky. It's super mm-hmm. easy, mm-hmm. even because you have like sixty pounds of gear on the back. Yeah, that just kind of pulls it pulls it backwards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything else. Otherwise, I think that's kind of a good review. Plus my thoughts around accessories and whatnot. I don't know. I really don't know that much when it comes to bike stuff oh yeah i mean i yeah i'm i'm really really glad that like you've got this bike that is working well for you um and and i love hearing about you know people's people's stories uh you know because oh yeah this bike just takes me places yeah but like but like the places you'll go you know hey dr (laughs) seuss So, thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion. Uh, Brian, where can folks find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Brian Mitch L, where I'm tweeting way more about biking and, like, Minneapolis stuff than I am about tech at this point in time. Who knows? <laughs> it'll probably switch. Um, otherwise, you can find me... us. One yeah, one of us. us, yeah. Uh, otherwise, you can find me on my website, brianm.me, where I post some blog posts occasionally, usually about tech, tech adjacent things. What about you, Ian? Uh, yeah, I'm Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. Uh, this episode of Second Opinion is released under a Creative Commons license, so feel free to use it, redistribute it, whatever you want to do with it, as long as you link back to the original page, which uh, once again is thenexus.tv slash SO118. If you would like to discuss this episode with other listeners, you can do so on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash thenexustv. And uh, if you're willing and able to support us financially as we continue to uh, review 
awesome products, uh, you can join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Until next time, have a good one. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. Convergence.